it's just quicker than picking the big one up and maneuvering it round. I've seen guys even use boat levels for, you know, for leveling the, you know, the brakes. I find boat levels a bit of a kill to be honest. They're, they're a little bit too accurate. A lot of brakes have une uneven arises and faces, and they're not even formed square. So a lot of time a boat level, <laughs> it's just a little bit overkill. It's a bit, you know, you know, two foot level does the same job. And, uh, you know, maybe you can put a boat level in your back pocket, but I don't wear jeans or work trousers. I wear shorts or joggers when I work. So uh, I've tried using tool belts. Uh, like certain other YouTubers out there use tool belts. I can't get on with anything like that. Um, I find if you, need, you know, if you need a tool straight away, just leave it on the wall next to you. Leave it at the bottom of your rack. If you're doing a corner, or leave it on, on, on the side of your motorboard. Just don't cover it in gobbo. Uh, tool belts, you know, it's heavy work enough picking all the bricks up every day and obviously like As you can see on this day, I was working on my own so I uploaded all the gear myself all the motorboards Etc, etc. You just don't want to be carrying around extra weight I'm then I'm not the lightest lightest person myself, so If I weigh 120 kilos, I don't want to be carrying fucking six or seven kilos worth of tools around my waist because that'll make me even heavier, so so it's something I've tried out, but, you know, I think the benefits are, you know, circumstantial and they can be to the individual. Some people like having a tool belt on. I can definitely see it being useful if you have like a super laborer, basically doing basically everything for you. So doing your, you know, doing all your jointing, doing your, you know, all your laboring, getting every brick, you know, putting the mortar, tucking the mortar in. You know, getting you know, getting tubs out, everything. You know, if you just have to stand next to that wall, I could see a tool belt being, you know, you know, advantageous. But you know, you know, a lot of people you know, working one on ones or even in gangs, the labourers aren't that fast, and they won't be able to do, you know, everything above and beyond. So, a lot of the time, you're gonna have to help out, which you know, it's just, it's just the way it's the way it is. You know what I mean? You, Labourers aren't, you know, people, I wouldn't expect a labourer to run around and do everything after me, do you know what I mean? Definitely, I don't expect my old man to do it, so um, I just think they're not very practical for most situations, but is what it is. Um, if you think anything else about the corner build, uh, I'm sure this is the shortest video I've got of me building the corner. I, I was going to speed all these uh, videos up. But I thought it's good to see it in real time, to see what I'm doing. Because if I speed it up, it just looks like I'm fucking flitting around the wall. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think of anything else. I used the six foot level for the last couple of course, so about the 18th, the 19th, the 20th course, the six foot level. Um, I do find it gives a slightly different reading to my other level, um, mainly because it's hitting more bricks, and obviously it's newer. Tolerances on these Magnuson levels, then you know they're not quite as good. Uh, it has a 45 degree level angle as well, so uh, that could be coming handy for like you know cut ups and stuff like that. You know if I'm uh, doing any 45 degree angle work, this is have you know it's a it's a joiners it's a sort of a joiners level really, the Magnuson, but it's uh, you know the flimsy, but they get the job done. They just give me that more peace of mind when I put the level across the wall. Especially at six foot, there's not much work that, especially on like a boundary wall or something, normally every panel is about, about 12 foot long, about length of two six foot levels. So just sliding your level up and down a wall like that will give you a good level reading. Um, also as well, uh, with the, you know, with building a corner, uh, you know, it is slower than you know using a profile obviously you can see i'm not laying bricks as fast as i would be to a profile but it's all uh, circumstantial you know i don't get to work super super early today i got to work at quarter to quarter to eight i got there and uh quarter to eight yeah, about half seven quarter to eight today i was a bit earlier than usual because uh, i was on my own for that reason i do try and set off a little bit earlier when i'm on my own Loaded out for 45 minutes, I got about 400 bricks loaded, maybe 450 almost. In uh, within half an hour, for, within within 45 minutes of arriving, getting all my tools out of the car, clamps, shovel, buckets, everything like that. Uh, within 45 minutes of arriving, I had about you know 450 odd bricks loaded myself. Went to get a tub around half eight, and uh, yeah, cracked on. Uh, so we've we've moved over to 
the uh, to the second corner to the you know the other side. Uh, I ended up working all the way from like half eight till about half twelve today because the corners took me a little bit longer. So these two twenty course corners took me from half eight till half twelve. I got broke off for about fifteen minutes. Uh, management wanted me to, uh, me to have a look at something. Uh, I got broke off fifteen minutes. Uh, went to have a toilet break. So probably in total around half an hour, so nine, quite nine, while well, 12, 12, 30, 10, 11, 12, about three and a half hours to build two 20 course corners on this garage, uh, which I thought was pretty good um, for laying time. So it's like one and, a half hour, one and a half hours per corner, all self jointed, everything like that. Normally with the old man, uh, I start, you know, if, if my old man's with me, I'll start building a corner. This is me other mentality, you know, behind building corners. It's all just sort of my, you know, personal anecdote. Um, so I'm just, you know, not recommending what you could, do, you should do, but it's just what I do. Is I tend to start building the corner because only takes like one big stack of bricks uh, to start building, and then my old man will just, you know, wander out, pod around the garage, and start loading the rest of it out. And by the time an hour's passed and I've built a corner, he should have loaded like sort of. A pack of bricks out by then and then he'll start jointing up and I'll move on to build the next corner and by the time he's joined to that corner I've not more or less built a second one so then we joint up together and then we go for a snap so it speeds it up quite a bit if my old man's with me just taking away the jointing aspect that takes that takes some time just in itself um, but it's definitely it's definitely uh, you know it's, it definitely helps in, in you know in, in dry weather because you can you have to join up every four course and a big reason I was doing it today I was doing it this is another sort of men, you know my other mentality behind building the corner is um you've obviously got to join the rear of the brickwork obviously it's a garage and the garage is on this job uh, specifically have four pillars inside there four stack of bomb bot pillars so they have um seven and a half, seven and a half brick from the uh, from the corners each corner front and back so if i obviously building racking back the corners i don't actually um meet the pillars i'm just about i'm about i'm basically just up to where i'd start putting my ties in racking the pillars back racking the corners back so when i come to running the gable in i've basically done majority of the jointing at each side of the two pillars and then i've just got the middle the middle section where there obviously there's a section of like you know six or seven bricks long where there isn't a pillar uh, and that's where I'm doing majority of my jointing and obviously behind the pillar it doesn't need jointing so I just rub it with my glove or rub it off with a brush flush it up a little bit um, and then obviously that's obviously between my tie wires where my 450 block would go so that just cuts out a bit of the jointing there that's a, another big bonus I think to building corners on a garage is you're getting a majority big chunky brickwork uh, obviously done uh, and especially how I tailed out the back here, I've built majority of the back on the corner. Um, and then, you, you know, you're doing a lot of the jointing. So, you know, when you, especially if you're working on your own, you're running in and then you've just got limited jointing. You know what I mean? So normally three or four courses are ideal. In winter, I used to build these garages up to 20 course, a full gable, and I just not jointed till the end of the day, especially if it were wet, the bricks were wet. So, you know, obviously the conditions can change. So, uh, especially if it was wet weather, I wouldn't probably build corners. I'd probably build a little six. This is what I used to do when in the middle of winter. I remember looking at some old footage from a couple of years ago. I used to build about a six course corner and then run it in. And then I'd build another little six course corner, run that in, and then six course again, get it to about 21, 22 by doing that. So that was me, me old strategy, especially when it's wet, because obviously running in, uh, giving the bricks the time to you know dry off in them long stretches and then obviously building the six course corner it's only like a three brick tail out so you know you haven't got too much corner to work with obviously attempting to build big corners in winter a lot of movement in the brick in the brickwork and especially with, depending on what type of bricks you you lay in uh you know you can have some issues with sinkage and stuff like that but this this brick is super dry so as soon as you've laid that brick you know it's gone off um, I'm just trying to think of any other 
any other point as I want to go over when it comes to building corners. Um, I'll you know I'll make videos on the, in the on this similar on different builds, but I'll I'll basically reference similar points. But especially when I'm I'm running, uh, I'm just laying my bricks freehand before I put my level on. I like to get my head down to like Aris level and just have a look at the Arises, do the all lining together. Um, it's my first brick level that I put on. I normally try level my first brick. I don't tend to plumb it. It just takes a bit too much time. I just put my level across the first brick and just try to follow that level with my eye. Um, I used to look at the joints. The joints is a good way to gauge. If you've got a consistent 10 mil joint, your brick shouldn't be far out. But these particular bricks are very, very size dependent. So they're very, very different sizes all over. Uh, banana, banana shaped all over the place. Some uh, little squint bricks that come and, you know, there's, you know, little wedge shaped bricks. <laughs> there's all sorts of different shapes. So... Um, I find to look at the aris, the top aris of the brick and just follow it along with my eye and obviously laying frog up I try to just tap me, you know, tap me, you know, my perp aris so they're all, all flush and that should get me somewhere within a couple of mil of being level and then when it comes to plumbing them, you know, obviously I've, I've, I always plumb each brick at you know, each side of the, of, the, of the tail and then obviously when I'm lining through I try and tap my bricks somewhat line I eye down first before putting my level on and, you know a common mistake that you know a lot of people make is they you know they they go to line through with the level and they just knock the both corner bricks out of plumb so the both end bricks that have just plumbed they just knock them out of plumb trying to knock the rest of them into line so I try to knock each individual brick with my hand and trowel and somewhat line it through my eye and then just put that level on just to uh just to just to just knock it to touch you know just to make sure it's just perfectly lined in in that way, you're not knocking out both of your corner, both of your tail end bricks that you've just plumbed. You're not knocking them out of plumb with your level, trying to line it through. It's a common thing a lot of people do. They just, you know, they've maybe not been taught the right way. It's not something that a lot of bricklayers will teach you, you know, especially if you're on price and you, and you know, you've got an apprentice. You're basically trying to make money out of them. You, you know, you, they're making you money because normally apprentices are a lot cheaper than having a labourer. And as well, obviously, if they're keen, you know, they can lay bricks and, you know, they're wanting to impress. So, we, you know, it's uh, obviously you're trying to just fucking, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of brickies just trying to make, you know, make a easy, easy bit of money out of them. You know what I mean? Especially for the time, short amount of time they'll have them before, you know, they come out of the time and go on their own or what, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so it's not a lot of thing, not a lot of time that people sit with you and teach you these things. It's just stuff you got to pick up. I do a lot, I watch people, you know, I, I watch different brick layers, you know, now and again, and uh, look at, you know, techniques they use, I just,